Hi guys, Rob from Rob's Model Cars and today you join me for part three of how to build the Hobby Design LB Works Audi R8. Uh, now if you've been following the series, the last part, part two, uh, we did an unboxing of this kit. So today's part three, uh, we're going to tackle disassembling uh, this Kyosho Audi R8 diecast model. Now this is actually the first Kyosho model that I've pulled apart, so uh, it's a bit of exploration as we go here, so um, let's get into it. So uh, if you saw the review I did of this model, uh, the model actually came with uh, the front window um, already popped out here, um, and both mirrors were broken off the model, so a um, bit disappointing there, but I guess that's the easy start. Uh, it's easier to know how the front window comes out. Uh, and also the mirrors are already been removed. So we'll put those in the box. That's the first part of disassembly that Kyosho did for me. So thank you, Kyosho. Um, and as usual with all these disassembly of these models, I've got my basic just screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver, a flat bladed screwdriver. Uh, not sure whether we need it on this one, but I've got my uh, triple uh, AAA Phillips head screwdriver which you use on the auto art models because they have tiny screws not sure whether we need that for this Kyosho uh, the trusty exacto knife just for cutting away any excess glue uh, and my little prying tool uh, which I got out of a mobile cheap mobile phone repair kit so this is good sometimes to be able to get in there and lever a door trim off or something like that so uh, that's all we need uh, we may need the Dremel but I'm not sure yet so we'll get into it so uh, as always, I use a piece of foam just to sit the model on. Um, now I've had a quick look at this model. Uh, I don't see any screws in the bottom of this model at all, like a auto art model or other brands. Um, so I'm assuming it's like a Burago, uh, and it's probably got screws uh, underneath the wheels. So what we're going to do first is just see if we can remove the wheels. So you've got to use a bit of force. Uh, let's have a look. Yes, there is. There's a screw under the wheel in the wheel arch here. So uh, that's obviously the wheels went on last on this model. So what we'll do, we'll pull all the wheels off the model because the fronts are probably the same as well. Um, just you grab the wheel either side, use a bit of force and push it outwards. Um, the brake discs actually come off as well. They're just on there loose. There's another one. So that's the wheels off. They come off pretty easy. Uh, and the brake rotors. Um, I don't want to break the... No, that's okay. We'll probably be able to get that out. Because um, we have all new brakes. Oh, we have all new brake parts with the Hobby Design kit. So uh, what I've done there, I'm just using my finger and I'm just breaking off the little parking brake. Uh, I'll save those anyway, but that enables you to get the rear rotor out. So... Uh, that's the four rotors out. Um, you can save those for another model because the Hobby Design kit has all new brake rotors and calipers in it. So you may be able to just keep those aside and you can use them for another custom model. So that's all the wheels off. Um, we may save those for another model. Um, we may keep the tyres. I may sell them. I'm not sure. But we'll put them in the box as well. Again, I'm just using a a plastic divider box uh, that I can put all my parts in um, to keep them all separated. So now you can see there's actually uh, screws in both wheel arches in the front and in the back. So uh, we'll take those four screws out. Hopefully there's no other hidden ones in there, but I'd say that those four screws are holding the floor, the whole floor of the model in. The front ones are out. Get the back ones out now. Now I do magnetise my screwdrivers also. Uh, it helps to hold on to the screws. As you can see there. Makes it a little bit easier to remove them. There we go. So we'll put those in the little divider as well. So that we know what's what. And let's see if this floor comes out. Oh, there we go. Well, that was pretty easy. All right, we'll just put the body to the side there. Um, 
So actually not too bad detail on this Kyosho. You do have your lower suspension arms. Uh, the hubs are in here. Uh, the back you've got a bit of a hole in the floor. You've got some 3D um, bottom of the engine or the gearbox uh, and a bit of suspension detail on the back as well. So um, these actually come apart as well. There's a subfloor section here I can see that comes off. Uh, same as the front as well. So we'll leave that together for now, but when it comes time to replace these hubs and brake calipers, um, which is how all hobby design kits come, they will just uh, fit back in and replace these ones. I'm sure that will be the same as the auto art kits. So we'll keep that aside. That's pretty much uh, pretty basic. There's not a lot to that. So let's just put that to the side and we'll keep moving on with the body. So you can see that the front section, the floor pan and the engine part is all just screwed into the uh, die cast body. So I think what we'll tackle is the, uh, the floor section first. Uh, I see a couple of little screws here so we'll see if that um, actually loosens the floor pan. As I say, we, we may have to use the Dremel here um, to cut some little tabs or to grind off some little pressed pins through the die cast, but we'll see how we go. So they're the two screws at the back of the interior pan. That one doesn't want to come out, there it is. Um, and maybe the engine has to come out first. No, that should come out. Okay, there we go. And there's actually two more. There's two more at the front. So there was those two at the back and these two at the front. So we'll take those two front screws out as well. And that should release the whole interior pan out of the die cast body. Okay, so there we have it. So that's the whole interior pan out. Now it is. it has got a flocked floor in it. Uh, mainly just black. There's a little bit of detail on there, the little uh, automatic shifter, or is this a manual? Uh, I think it's a manual actually. You've got three pedals, so clutch, brake, accelerator. Um, now, if you want to remove the seats, there are just little pins that come through the bottom with a bit of hot glue. So you could use your X-Acto knife and just cut those little pins off and the seat will come out and you can repaint that uh, just in case you want to repaint the whole interior. Not sure whether I'm going to do this on this model. I just want to get this one built pretty quick. So uh, we'll put that interior piece to the side as well. Now you can see we're starting to open up the model. Uh, so we might we may take the engine compartment out next with the engine detail. Now this model does have the pop-up spoiler, uh, as you can see there. And you can close it down. That's these two little buttons there. One is a release for the... Uh, that's that's the engine release uh, and that one is the pop-up spoiler so we want to retain that in the model that's pretty cool uh, and that's got two little screws uh, one either side so we're going to remove those screws so that we can uh, is it removed no it's not a screw it's just a bit of glue on there we might leave that in on there uh, there's four screws here on the engine compartment, so I'm going to take those ones out first and see what we're dealing with. I think maybe we leave those uh, opening buttons joined onto the, uh, the engine piece and not remove those at all. Because it looks like they are glued on there. Oh, lost a screw, there it is. And we'll get those little ones out at the front also. So, so far these Kyosho models look like they're really easy to pull apart. Uh, we may run into a problem always when I open my mouth and say that. Something happens. There's those last two screws. And there we go, that is coming out. There is a little trim piece on the body there. So I think that will come out. Let's lift the back out first. Okay, so the, there we go. 
So the four screws actually hold this whole engine compartment in, um, but the hatch of the model is actually, oh, it's not fully attached. Okay, there we go. So there's actually the gas struts. The lower section of the gas strut is joined onto the engine compartment, as you can see here. Uh, and then the struts on the engine just sleeve straight over it. So there's actually uh, no hinges as such. There's just hinge pins on this engine cover. So uh, that's interesting. Um, that's pretty easy. And I'm pretty sure that plastic piece may come out as well. Um, it is glued in there. But again, what I might do with this one is just mask the window up and then just paint this back section uh, rather than remove all the window and have to glue it back in. So... Um, so that's the rear engine lid out. That was pretty easy. Um, and there, yeah, you can see those spring-loaded buttons. Uh, there we go. So yeah, we'll leave those attached. They're actually glued on through some pins. Um, yeah, so that is the engine compartment out. So we'll put that to the side as well. Now the rear spoiler, that's just sitting in there as well um, on some pins. Let's see how that works. Okay, so that's just like a little sliding mechanism there. It's like a Hot Wheels style of a hinge where these are just curved and they just slide over. So that's the spoiler as well. That has a piece of photo etch mesh in that, so we'll actually pop that piece out, um, probably just with a screwdriver or put my knife in there, but that's a little rear wing, so that, that will need to be painted as well when we repaint the model. So, so far, so good. Now, if we open up the doors, um, you can see there is a trim piece on the side of the door here. Now that's actually got the seat belts in it as well. Um, and you can see uh, there's a little bit of glue here, here, here and here on the four sides. So I might just try and pry that away. I won't put too much pressure on it. I don't want to break it. Yeah, we might get that we might get the Dremel out for that one and cut those off and just grind off the little bit of glue that might make those pop out a little bit easier okay so we've got the Dremel uh, again I'm using my handheld extension on the Dremel uh, and I'm using this little round uh, cutter milling piece um, that I'm going to just grind off where the glue is and the pin comes out so you can see there where um, they just a bit of put, put a bit of glue over the top of where the plastic piece fits into the metal. So rather than try and pry this off uh, with a screwdriver, it'll just break the plastic part. So we're just going to grind off the top. Alright, made a bit of a mess, but um, hopefully that will work. Okay, so hopefully that's loosened the, um, the plastic away from the die cast. And then I can just put the flat bladed screwdriver in there and twist it. Yep, that's work there. I'll try and get that... Back one. That back one's a little bit more stubborn. I don't want to force that too much. I don't want to break the piece. I'll just grind that out just a little bit more. Let's see if that will get it. Just take your time with this piece um, and try not to break it. And just leave her off the sill of the model. Okay, there we go. Now the seat belt is actually just glued onto the inside of the body, so that is one side trim piece out. 
Um, there's still parts of the tab left on there, uh, so you will be able to locate that back on, but it shouldn't be a major issue uh, with that at all. Uh, and we'll do the same with this side as well. We'll just try and separate it. Just put the screwdriver in there and just try and turn it. Get this one in there from the front. And there we go. And there's the second piece. So again, it still has the little tabs on it. Um, so we can glue that back into position pretty easily. Uh, and that is those trim pieces off so you can see a little bit clearer what we need to do uh, we may try and get this roof skin out um, so I'll just use the flat bladed screwdriver and push it under the back and just give the screwdriver a twist but depending on how much glue they put in there it's going to be how easy that comes off put it down the other side there we go Now one side's pretty loose, but the other side seems a little bit stuck. Oh, there we go. So that's pretty easy. That's pretty standard with most manufacturers. There's four, dob four little lugs and four dobs of glue on the inside of the roof, and you can see where they lifted some of the paint as well. So that is the uh, roof liner out. So, so far, so good. Now I think we should be able... There we go. Dashboard comes straight out. Um, because that is slotted over the top of the metal um, and that's the dashboard out. So again having a look at that, the d detail's pretty good on this for a Kyosho model. Uh, nice little clear decals for the instruments, center console. Um, so yeah that's the time if you want to actually repaint this just remove the steering column uh, and the steering wheel, paint your pieces and then put them back together again. So that's pretty cool, that's the interior out. Now we can release this piece, that's the piece that I tried to get out first, that's what holds the uh, hood in, you can see those lubricated sides to help the hood go up and down, so we'll put that aside as well. Now we can get the hood out, the hood will just drop out from the top, so there's a rather large hood actually on this one, um, and that's got little struts on it as well. Now, again, when I paint this, I will probably just put some masking tape around these little struts and mask them off rather than try and remove them and refit them. Uh, I'll just be careful when I um, use some paint stripper on this. I don't think they're plastic. I think they're metal, um, but I just, just take a little bit of care around these because they will help hold the front hood up. So that's ready to start stripping off as well, and um, you can paint that also. Now we've actually got clear access to the uh, screws to take the doors off, so we'll do that. Now these are fitted on the same way as Hot Wheels Elite. They just have a screw which goes through into the hinge of the door. Let's get that little screw out. And these should just come out with a little bit of wiggle. There we go. So it's exactly the same as a Hot Wheels Elite hinge. Uh, has the center lug what the screw goes into and it's got a top and bottom locating lug. So that's pretty cool. We'll do that to the other side. We'll get the other door off. So yeah, other than the tricky part of finding the hinges, uh, the screws at the start to pull the floor out of the model, uh, the rest of this model is actually coming apart pretty easy. So that is the doors out of the model, so we are getting there. Now, front window, um, or shall we take this other section out? I think we'll take this front hood section out. Um, again, I think it's glued in there. There's a little tab here. We'll see if we can get underneath that with a screwdriver. No, I think I'll use the Dremel again there, and there's a little tab there. We're just going to grind the top of that one off. Okay, now from the inside, oh, from the top, we'll push down. So that's just, that was also a flocked line front storage compartment. So that's out, we'll put that to the side also. Um, what do we got now? 
front window. Now, as I said, this came shipped to me with the this corner of the window already out, so I can see from that that there's a little tab in there on that side, uh, so I know there's a tab on this side as well. Uh, so what we want to do is just slightly distort the window uh, and pull that out. Now that side is coming out. I don't want to reef this out. It looks like there's a little bit of glue. A little bit of glue there or a tab. Okay, there we go. So in that corner, you can see the blue paint on the windscreen. Obviously, there's the paint removed there where it's, uh, where it's not black. So they've got a little bit of glue in each corner. Uh, you can see that side, the glue is shiny. Where are we? There we go. But the window actually wasn't stuck to that. Um, so there wasn't a lot holding that window in. So just be mindful of those two little tabs at the top of the windscreen which tuck in underneath the die cast roof. Just give that a blow. I don't want any of those metal shavings on there. So that can go into the uh, bucket as well, into the storage box. Uh, and this rear wiper, uh, there's a little tab that sticks through the back and it, most of these little parts um, are just a press fit so a, a pin will go through the body and they'll just either put a dob of glue on it uh, or they will just try and press it. So that's the windscreen wiper. Um, I'll just poke that through. No, that's not going to quite work so I'll use my Dremel on that as well. So the Dremel is an absolute lifesaver for, for uh, pulling these models apart, just so that you don't damage anything. And just trying to push that out, and there we go. So you can see there's a little bit of a stem there, that's what's going through the hole. Uh, I've just got this woodworking tool called an awl, uh, which is, it's not too pointy, but it is sharp. Um, that's good for getting in the little holes and pushing things back out through the hole. So that was a good way to remove the uh, windscreen wiper. Uh, and those little hood struts that we saw earlier, uh, those ones there, they are just looped onto a metal rod, which is glued in here. So again, I may just leave those ones in place. Um, and they are metal. I think they are metal, so we don't have to worry too much uh, about those. Now, what else do we have? We've got some little side windows in here. So, I'm not sure how those are glued in there yet. We might take these side blades out. So these side blades, I want to do those carbon fibre on the Liberty Walk model. Um, and they are... There's actually some little tabs here, again two little pin tabs which are holding the top in. We're just going to use the Dremel, remove those ones and this side blade should come off. Okay, so there were a couple more on the side there. Didn't look like any pin was coming through those ones, but um, I thought we might just remove anything there as well. Now, they don't really seem to be moving too much. We might try and give these a push out with the awl. Maybe on this Golf model, these were, these were fitted on and then the model was painted all in one, sort of coming out, just keep trying, I think they are just plastic those pieces so I don't want to force them too much, okay yeah I, th I have a funny, oh there we go, just be careful with those, they are only plastic, um, so that's one side blade, uh, that's that can be repainted or applied with carbon fiber uh, there's a little piece of mesh on here as well so um, we'll cut that away with the exacto knife 
So we'll just run the exacto in between the body and the mesh. And see if we can just remove that. A little bit tricky to get that one out. Maybe a bit too much glue in the top there. And there we go. So yeah, a bit of glue on there. So we'll put that to the side as well. And the other side will be the same. So if we just use that tool and try and push just put the doors out of the way. Just push that tool through those holes and try and push the pins out. Bottom's a little bit tricky. force so I think there's a little bit of glue on that bottom edge um, don't force it if it doesn't feel like it's going to come out um, and there's also the fuel filler on there as well so there's a little pin through the back again just grind that pin off and you can remove that silver fuel filler piece because if you paint it or do decals on it you want to remove that okay so we've got a bit of mesh on this side as well so we'll just cut down through there and remove that piece of mesh these ones are a little bit distorted, so I may just apply some new mesh if I can't get these ones back in. I might try and straighten them. They are a bit distorted. They put too much glue on those and they are hard to get out. So they're your little side pieces of mesh. Then you've got these two little plastic windows, so you definitely want to remove those. Um, and there's a third brake light here, which you can just see under the roof. You can see this big red piece here. This has two pins on it as well with some glue on it. So we're going to Dremel those two off so we can remove that brake light. Now hopefully this isn't uh, glued in too well because if it's glued in we, might, we may just break the piece which is not what you want to do. I don't want to break any pieces, but it's an unknown at this stage. As I say, this is the first Kyosho model that I've pulled apart and that did break. So too much glue underneath that piece. Okay, which way to go? That way there. So yeah, you can see all the glue residue on there. Um, it is what it is. So I might, might just have to glue that back in pieces. Yeah, there's just a ton of glue under that. Um, that's not that's not good for the modifier. Um, it was a very thin little um, brake light piece, so um, yeah, we might have to make something up for that. So just be aware, um, all models are probably the same. That piece is glued in with some big dobs of glue, so you're never going to get that black uh, that red brake light plastic piece out without it breaking. Uh, so that's pretty disappointing. Um, the next thing is these windows. Um, after that broke like that, I am really reluctant to try and remove these side windows because I think these will be glued in as well. Uh, there are no physical lugs coming through the back of the metal here. Um, so I think these are going to be glued in. Um, just see if I can do a little cut behind here. Okay. So what I'm doing, there's a little channel here between the back of the window and the die cast body. I'm just running my X-Acto knife through that. It did loosen the one on this side. And there you go. Okay, so just a tiny little bit of glue on those windows. Um, but they do come out because I, I do like to strip all the paint off these bodies and start from a bare metal body. Uh, you just get a better paint job and you don't have to worry about the thickness of, an, uh, of another layer of paint on the body. Okay. 
Just easy does it. And there we go, that one's out as well. So they're the little side windows. Just use your knife on the inside, in between, in between the window and the die cast body. Okay, what else do we have? We've got tail lights on the back. We've got these four fins with the mesh and we've got the exhaust tips and the number plate. Now all of these uh, pieces have little lugs which come through the metal body. There's the number plate ones. There's your grills, tail lights and exhaust tips. So again, we're just going to use the Dremel and we're going to grind off the heads of these things just to make sure we remove any glue from the die cast body and then we should be able to push those parts out. So we'll just Dremel those off. Okay, so that's all the lugs ground off. So now we should just be able to use our poking tool. And there we go, they just push it out. So they're your exhaust tips. They come out pretty easily, one either side. As I say, using that Dremel just takes it off the top of the pin uh, and also any glue, that residue glue that's on the top there makes it a lot easier to remove these parts. Okay, there's only one pin holding these louvers on there. Uh, just trying to poke that out. Maybe the tail light has to come out first. Oh, there we go. Okay, so there's the tail light. That's the inner part of the tail light and the lens. So they came out pretty easy just by pushing, uh, pushing the pins from the back. So we'll do that the same on this one as well. That one's a little bit harder to come off. Sometimes there may be more glue in behind these parts. Maybe they didn't stay on too well in the factory. Uh, and you find that the, the workers... Oh, there we go. The workers actually add a dob of glue behind there. So, a bit too much force there. I actually broke that. Uh, you can see that tail light. I broke that from trying to force it out. Um, luckily, the lens is okay, so... I will repair this and just glue it back together again and then when the lens goes back on uh, you won't notice it so again it just pays to be a little bit careful when you try and remove these parts they don't always come away like you uh, would like them to so yeah you've just got to be careful Oop. So that came off, that's one, the grill piece and the plastic mesh is all in the one piece. So you can see there, it's actually got two lugs on there, um, but the second one is actually into the die cast metal, there is no lug behind. So that's why these are a little bit harder to come off. So we'll put that in the box as well, and we'll just try and get rid of this other one. There we go, that didn't take too much, and that came off. So there's your other side grill piece. They're not too bad, just be careful of the uh, rear brake lights. And there's the number plate, that came off very easy. Just two little pins behind. And that is everything stripped off the back of the model. So tail lights, grills, exhaust tips, number plate, side windows are out, side blades are off. Uh, now all we've got is the front, so we've got the headlights, the grills and these blades, and also the centre grill. 
Uh, this is all part of the die cast body, I think, just painted black. Uh, so again, we're going to use the Dremel. We've got two tabs on the on the on these grills on the front. There's two tabs behind there. There's two tabs on the headlights and two tabs on the grill. So again, we'll go ahead and we'll use the Dremel and we'll grind those those little tabs off. Okay, that was pretty easy. So let's see. So I'm going to use, instead of my real pointy tool, I'm going to use my small screwdriver for the headlights. And I'm just going to try and work these out. I can feel them loose from the front. Just going to rotate that a little bit. Okay, so there's the front lens. That's come off. Okay, I'll put that in the box as well. Actually, I can feel the grill really loose from those two tabs, so I'm going to take the grill out. That was very easy to come out. Uh, that does have the number plate on it as well, which can be removed. There's two little tabs behind there. Grind those two little tabs off, and that number plate will come straight off as well. Um, we'll try and get this lower grill out before I pop the headlight out. Doesn't quite want to come out yet. Oh, that was a little pin came out from the bonnet. Okay, so I said I didn't want to remove those, but they have come off anyway. So that tiny little pin is the cross pin. This actually goes through it like that and you can see on the body here where my thumb is that little cross pin is glued into the die cast body uh, you can see the glue on that one so we might actually remove that and there we go pass it up through the bottom so there are your little T pieces oh, I just dropped that one I don't want to lose that a little metal rod Okay, so there are your little bonnet struts. So those little T pieces will actually glue back into those slots in the die cast body. So don't lose those. I'll put those in there. So that's going to make it a little bit easier to strip the model anyway. So, um, oh, that headlight on that side, I didn't even have to force that one. That came out in one piece. So the lens is on the headlight. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you have to really struggle sometimes pulling these models apart. Oh, there we go. That one came out. That is the louvers from the left hand side. So that one came straight out. Uh, we just have to get this headlight bucket and the louvers out of this other side. There we go. There's the headlight. So I'll put that away. I think I see a bit of glue in there, so yeah, you you don't get an easy ride sometimes. Sometimes these are really hard to pull apart. Just have to persevere a little bit. Use the knife there. Yeah, that one's going to take a little bit more effort to get out. I might get the Dremel onto that one again. Oh, 
Okay. So that's my reasoning to try and get that out. It's just to drill that metal out a little bit more so I can get my tool in behind there, see if that will actually push it out some more. I think this has got actually, this is very shiny in here, I think it's got a lot of glue in behind it, so I'm just going to have to play around with this to get it out. I'm just using my X-Acto knife with my number 11 pointy blade on it. I don't want to break this part at all, otherwise it will. I'll have to buy another model for that part because Kyosho do not sell any parts. Just keep running the knife through it. I am making some progress here. And I think, yes, they definitely put some glue behind this part. Probably didn't press in uh, with the snap fittings right. So they just went, I'll just, I'll whack some glue in there. Because they don't think anyone's ever going to pull these models apart. The majority of people don't. Um, except us crazy modifiers that love to pull these models apart. Okay, I've just put my pick in behind there, just so I can try and force it out, and there we go. Wow, there was a lot of glue on that one, holding that in there. So it is out. Thankfully, there's a little bit of glue residue on there, but I don't think that's going to affect it when the model goes back together again. We'll be able to touch that up. Uh, and that is the front grill. So that is front grill, side grills, headlights, the little bonnet struts that were pointing through here uh, with the little T pieces I showed you. That's removed. Uh, there's some little plastic sill pieces on here I just noticed. On the, on the door sill here, uh, we may just put the knife under there. I know the hobby design kit comes with new ones of those. There we go. It's just a little plastic and chrome door sill. There are replacement ones of those in the hobby design kit, so we can just we delete those ones, throw those away. I'm not going to use those. Um, so that is pretty much the whole Kyosho body disassembled. So as you can see from my experience here, most of the parts do come out reasonably easy. Um, but Kyosho is guilty for using some blobs of glue, maybe to hold some parts down that weren't staying in there by themselves. So um, just by watching this video, you can see that if it doesn't pop out straight away, there more than likely is glue behind those parts. So just use your X-Acto knife and just try and find the edge and just slowly cut away at it. Um, if you don't release some of that glue tension and you try and pry a part off, it is just going to break the part, as you saw with the uh, third brake light in here. There's just a few big dobs of glue under here, and there was no way that that was ever going to come apart um, because it was such a thin piece of plastic. So that's pretty much uh, the most of the body. The only other part we've got here is the uh, is the door trims. Um, we might try and do this on camera while we're here. These usually just pop off. I say usually, uh, might be the same scenario where there might be a bit too much glue underneath them uh, and you will break a trim, um, but I'll play around with that a little bit later. I think that was starting to distort the plastic a little bit when I pried it through there. You can see that's flexing, I can bend it back there, um, but you've just got to be really careful with these things because if they try and snap these parts on and they don't stay on, they'll just put some glue on there and they'll hold it until the glue goes off. So I do prefer to paint these bodies uh, to be able to remove the door trim and remove the window. Worst case scenario, if I feel I can't get the door trim off, I will actually mask up the door trim and mask up the windows both sides uh, before I paint the door. Uh, I'd rather do it that way than just break a window or break a door trim because you're just not going to get these parts, replacement parts, 
And do you really want to buy two models to build one model? I don't think so. So anyway, that is um, part three of how to disassemble the Kyosho Audi R8 diecast model. Um, next step, uh, I will strip all the paint off this diecast body and the next part, part four, uh, will actually start in flat, uh, installing all the Liberty Walk wide body flares and parts on the body before we paint it. So uh, the next episode you join me, um, we'll tackle putting all the uh, resin parts of the LB kit onto this diecast body and turn it into another wide bodied monster car from Liberty Walk. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, part three of how to disassemble the Kyosho diecast Audi R8. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do. Don't forget to smash that like button uh, and don't forget to click the bell notification also. Um, a lot of people are missing out on the videos that I upload every week. Um, algor the algorithms that you YouTube use, they're messing around with them um, and yeah, people are not getting the video updates. So don't forget to smash that bell notification uh, and feel free to share these videos also on social media. So that's it for today's video. I uh, hope that was informative for you uh, and now you can tackle the stripping of this model yourself. Um, so stay tuned for part four. So until next time, uh, thanks for watching.